there's a variety of skills that we're looking for. One is basic verbal skills, the ability to communicate, uh, to think quickly on your feet, and to respond, uh, to, uh, to be an active listener. I mean, it's one thing to be able to verbalize, but it's sometimes more important to be able to hear what someone's telling you. They may be telling you something, but you're so focused on trying to get out some verbiage that you're not listening to them. So the listening skills are real, a real critical part of the uh, uh, process. Uh, the, the other part is uh, just having sound judgment. I know that may sound trite, but someone who has sound judgment, just good common sense, and um, uh, someone that really has a healthy attitude toward themselves and others and can understand I mean, because the scenarios vary so much, uh, you'll have a situation where you'll have someone who has a history of some mental health problems, and uh, when you listen to that type of dialogue, uh, it, it's obvious that they're not with the rest of us. And uh, at times it would be easy to mock or make fun of, and, and, which is absolutely inappropriate. Uh, someone who... Uh, Officer Down, 612 Haley, Central Area, Code 3. What do you want, to Sergeant? You need to get into a car, travel across the railroad tracks, and set up across the way. The east side of the building faces the train tracks. That's where the entrance is. I need you to provide cover for the entry team. Your Sierra One. Contact me as soon as you're in position. Right. Sergeant Rooker, what's the situation? We're not sure yet. Officers Tobin and Bale from Central were answering a Code 30 Adam. The officers approached the warehouse and found the front entrance door open. As they were entering the building, they were fired upon. Bale was shot in the face. Tobin apparently grabbed Bale, dragged him around to the back of the building, and called for assistance. By the time assistance arrived, the firing from within had subsided. Bale's en route to the hospital, and Tobin's standing by to provide information. We're hearing random shots fired. We've set up communications in the ICE building. The owner's here. Come on. Well, of course. I don't want any more damage to occur than already has. Uh, Mrs. Schneibly, this is Sergeant Rooker. Would you mind repeating to him what you just told me? Well, yes, of course. Hello, I'm Marcia Schneibly. I own this building. Well, the business does. I was just telling this officer here that, well, my warehouse is missing. And when the police called this morning and said something about someone shooting off guns in my warehouse, well, I thought, well, where's Hector? I mean, he's a diligent employee. He would not just allow someone to come in and shoot up my building. Mrs. Schneibly, do you think it could be Hector firing off these weapons? Well, heaven's sake, no. Hector is a sweet young man. A little slow, maybe, but mentally challenged, but not... Brooker! Packmeyer! Would you please excuse us, Mr. Schneibly? Please finish what you were saying to this officer here. Thank you. Mrs. Schneibly, you were saying that you believe your warehouseman is missing? Believe he is missing? Well, I should say so. Hector reports to work Monday through Friday. 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. He is a very dependable employee. Why, in five years of working for us, he has never missed a day. Mr. Schneibly, what's Hector's full name? And can you give me a physical description? Oh, yes. It's Hector Martinez. And oh, he's about six feet tall, about 180 pounds, clean shaven, dark hair. I don't know how old he is. Um, you know, like I said before, he's, he's a little bit mentally challenged. He, he's simple. Well, have you seen that movie, Forrest Gump? That's the way he is. That's the way he is. Forrest Gump wouldn't hurt anybody, and neither would Hector hurt anybody. Uh, Mrs. Schneibly, nobody says Hector has or would hurt anybody. Up until now, we didn't even know about Mr. Martinez. We're just trying to determine what the situation is. Mrs. Schneibly, would you have a home phone number for Mr. Martinez? Well, yes. Uh, well, not with me at the office. I mean, I'd, I'd have to call to get it. Can you give me a layout of the warehouse? Oh, well, yes. Well, it's mostly a big, empty building. Um, we keep it for extra storage, and Hector maintains the building for when we need extra space. Well, that's not what you asked, is it? Oh, well, let's see. Uh, okay, the building was built to utilize the train tracks. And so the roll-up doors and the entrance face the railroad tracks. And when you walk in, well, it's just a big, open building. Um, oh, well, I have some furniture stored in there from when the children were small, and, and my husband and the boys have some mini bikes in there as well. Is there just one large room? Oh, no, there are two large rooms upstairs. Well, the second room, I don't know, it has some old scales, junk, really, nothing, nothing important. Huh. 
You said upstairs. Is there a downstairs to the building as well? Oh, yes. I Didn't I mention that? Uh, well, it's mostly just beams and floor supports and... Oh, and Hector has his little makeshift office down there. Nothing fancy. Is there an outside entrance to the basement, Mrs. Schneibel? Oh, heavens no. No, I had that sealed up years ago. You know, we have trouble with hobos here. I mean, they ra ride the train in the day and, and, and at night stop and look for a place to sleep. Well, we literally had a hobo camp down there. No, I had workmen come and cement and brick up that door. No, do you know what it does to your insurance rates when you have hobos in your building? Oh, just terrible. No, there's only one entrance to the basement and it's through the warehouse. I don't remember if the stairs are in the first room or the second room. Is, is does that matter? Mr. Schneibel, is there a phone line in the building and do you know the number? Oh, yes, yes. I know. The number is 213-298... No, no, no. No, 213-289. No, I'll just have to call and get it for you. But there is a phone. It's in Hector's little basement office area. You know, I wanted him to have a nice little desk with a phone on it upstairs. But no, he insisted on having the phone installed downstairs in the basement, that dark, dank basement. Is there anything else you can tell me about the warehouse or about Hector? Oh, nothing I can think of. It's, it's just a big warehouse that's empty, and Hector is just a simple man trying to make a living. I can't understand how he could be causing all this trouble. It's just not like him. Mrs. Schneibley, we haven't determined that Hector is causing all this trouble. Mrs. Schneibley, we've set up a communications post uh, over by the ice house across the way. Could I ask you to go in there and use the telephone to call your office and get those phone numbers we talked about? Oh, well, sure, but I don't want to be in the way. I'll just use the phone in my car if that's all right. That'd be fine. Excuse me, sir. Yes, officer. What did you learn from the owner of the property? Well, the name of the missing warehouseman is Hector Martinez. Uh, he works Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., hasn't missed a day of work in five years. He's about six feet tall, weighs about 180 pounds, clean-shaven, dark hair. Now, she says he's mentally challenged. Uh, she's going to call her office and get a home telephone number for him. Good. She also said that the building was built in relation to the railroad. All the roll-up doors and the entrance door are on the same side only. She said that there are two large interior rooms, mostly empty. Okay. There's also a basement to the building. It houses Hector's office and apparently some beams and floor supports. Okay. Unfortunately, Mrs. Schneibley doesn't recall if the stairs leading to the basement are on the first room or the second room. I see. Uh, apparently, there is a telephone line into the building. It's in the basement. Uh, she doesn't know the number offhand. She's calling her office to find it. Good. Uh, one last thing. Mrs. Schneibley said that Hector's not the kind of person to hurt anybody, and she doesn't think it's him in there firing the rounds. Well, we'll find that out soon enough. Thanks. Good job. This is Officer Keeler. He was one of the responding officers to the 30 Adam. As I was telling Packmeyer, we get false alarms down here all the time. The wind's always blowing the doors open on these old buildings, or we have transients camping out. Last thing I expected was gunfire. Did you see anyone? No, not really. Everything happened real quick. We were approaching the door. It was partially open. Bales went to reach for it. He had his hand on the doorknob. It seemed to me that the door was closing rather than opening. I got this sinking feeling in my stomach, and then wham, Bales was hit and I was dragging him out of there. I don't know what to tell you guys. I didn't really see anything. I heard the sound, and I saw Bales fly backwards. Whoever shot him must have been right up on the door. All I'm saying is there's one entrance, the front. Saunders and Tella were placed across the railroad tracks to cover us. But that's a distance, man. 
place is big inside. I know it. I can tell. We're gonna need some long-range power. This isn't gonna be pretty. I bet they panicked when Central showed up. I bet they're in there freaking out. Excuse me, sir. Officer, I'll be calling a briefing with the tactical officers momentarily. Please excuse us. Yes, sir. Briefing everyone! Come on, let's go! Okay, this is what we know. We have one wounded officer, and weapons fire is randomly erupting from within the structure. CNT's been telephoning the warehouse, but there's been no pickup. The warehouse is broken into two rooms. In one of the rooms, which one we don't know, are stairs leading to a basement. The basement is dark, and it consists mainly of floor supports. There's also an office area. We place sniper teams on three surrounding buildings. The approach will be from side four to three to two around to side one. We can assume the opening one will be secured. We have the keys from the owner, so there should not be a problem with entry unless the door is barricaded from the inside. We know it's a large space, so we're issuing two, two, threes. Bats in the fire, Packmire, let's light them up. We enter and move with stealth. Carmichael, scout. Denton, shotgun. Pup, you're being issued the M16 for range. If there's a distance between us and the shooter, and Pup has the shot, it's his. Rhea, Wixel, you're in on the entry, you trail. Okay, let's move out. Entry team in position. High ground one. Side one clear of threat. Roger that. Ready. To go. Hold. Try the door. Try the key. Mirror up. Entry team ready to make entry. Ready to enter door. Go! Entry team in. Carmichael, move up to the door, mirror it, and see if it's clear.
Ready? Go. Mirror up. Looks clear. Stairwell, far right wall, no sign of gray. Pop, you cover left. Rhea, Wixel. You take the stairwell, Carmichael Denton, you move left with me. Ready to make entry? Go! Hold. Carmichael, mirror that area to the left. Clear the area. Go. Hold. Pop. Go. It was not a victory, but a defeat. We were not successful in saving the life of the suspect we wished to apprehend. Rather, we lost that life and jeopardized the lives of others. It is true that the suspect determines the outcome of a crisis, but it's our responsibility to help guide the suspect towards a peaceful resolution. Remember, a truly successful resolution is one where no shots are fired. An investigation is being conducted into today's events. You will be cooperative, helpful, and honest when dealing with the investigators. Until the investigation is complete, I'm suspending Pup from active duty status. Pup, today you acted alone and without regard to your element. You let your fellow officers down. Until this investigation is completed, I think it's best that you continue to train and study, but not participate in any call-ups. That's all. Dismissed. Pup, the department's investigation into our last call-up has concluded. They found no misconduct on your part. I was just finishing the paperwork to reinstate you to active duty status. I spoke with both Lieutenant Hancock and the element about the situation. Everyone's willing to work with you. They think you have potential. I'd like you to think about how close you were to losing your position in deep platoon. You need discipline. Just keep in mind I'm watching your every move. From this point forward, you're to adhere to the procedures and tactics of this platoon. If not, you're on patrol duty in the harbor area. Colt 45 caliber. Hey. Hey, how you doing? You ready for a combat drill? Multiple moving targets? All bad guys? Reload as necessary. Come on, we'll test your reflexes and your aim. With 45s, make ready and drop. This is the combat drill. There will be multiple moving targets. All bad guys. Reload as necessary. 
No par time. This is a reflex drill. On the whistle. Officers, guns at low ready. Prepare to commence firing. Make ready. This is a dozier drill. Engage each of the five pepper poppers until they fall. Reload as necessary. Par time is five seconds. On the whistle. The Presidente drill is up. There are three targets and multiple engagements. Starting from either the left or the right, shoot the first target once, second target once, third target twice, second target once, and first target once. Speed load, then do it all again. Par time is 10 seconds. On the whistle. Officers, guns at low ready. Prepare to commence firing. Make ready. This is a dozier drill. Engage each of the five pepper poppers until they fall. Reload as necessary. Par time is five seconds. On the whistle. Officers, guns at low ready. Prepare to commence firing. Make ready. Officer down, 612 Haley, Central Area, Code 3. Briefing everyone. Come on, let's go. Okay, this is what we know. We have one wounded officer, and weapons fire is randomly erupting from within the structure. CNT's been telephoning the warehouse, but there's been no pickup. The warehouse is broken into two rooms. In one of the rooms, which one we don't know, are stairs leading to a basement. The basement is dark, and it consists mainly of floor supports. There's also an office area. We've placed sniper teams on three surrounding buildings. The approach will be from side four to three to two around to side one. We can assume the opening one will be secured. We have the keys from the owner, so there should not be a problem with entry unless the door is barricaded from the inside. We know it's a large space, so we're issuing 223s. Fats in the fire, Packmire. Let's line them up. We enter and move with stealth. Carmichael, scout. Denton, shotgun. Pup, you're being issued the M16 Varane. If there's a distance between us and the shooter, and Pup has the shot, it's his. Rhea, Wixel, you're in on the entry, you trail. Okay, let's move out. Entry team in position. High ground one, side one clear of threat. Roger that, ready, to go. Hold. Try the door. Try the key. Mirror up.
Entry team ready to make entry. Ready to enter door. Go! Entry team in. Carmichael! Listen up! Can you hear me out there? I got me a ticket out of here! Listen up! <laughs> Help! Shut up! Shut up! I'm talking! You hear me out there? Are you out there? Listen! I know you're out there! I'm gonna kill this guy! Carmichael, can you see anything? I can't see anything. Prepare for dynamic entry. Carmichael, move up to the door and hold. Pop! Cover the door. You ready to move? Move. Hold. Denton, flashbang. Carmichael, go left. Denton, go right. Rhea, go right after Denton. Pop! Go right after Rhea. Wixel, go left. Stand by. Ready? Initiate. Packmire, we are set up. Flashbang. Denton, you go down first. Carmichael, follow Denton. Pup! Get your butt over here, you're down third. Wix will follow Pup. I'll trail. Rhea, you hold. Stand by. Ready? Initiate. Thank <laughs> you. 